This is Conversations on Discipleship with Father Adam Streitenberger from St. Gabriel Catholic Radio and Diocese of Columbus Media. Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me again today is Patrick Tolles. Welcome. Thank you. Just excited to be back. Yeah, it's great to have you again. Uh, Let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we ask that you prepare us for whatever is before us. We know that you guide our life um, and we entrust ourselves to you. You are a good Father um, who provides for all of our needs. We just ask, O Lord, and we entrust this day to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, um, Patrick, let's continue kind of our our conversation on sports and the spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talked, you know, a a lot about practice and also about um, the game, Mm -hmm. you know, the game of eternal life and Mm -hmm. mass. Um, You know, one of the things... You know, may, and maybe it is a stretch, but, you know, some people, I mean, first of all, we know people have like different athletic abilities. Mm-hmm. And some people, and I, you know, my experience with CrossFit is there are, you know, like there are, there are like countless different types of athletes. Absolutely. That excel in different things. And when one looks at like the array of, of the, like kind of the virtues of sports, mm-hmm. you know. Um, some people excel in some areas, some people excel in different areas. You know, some people are stronger, some people are faster, some mm-hmm. people have more cardio endurance, some people, you know. For sure. Um, and I, I think in the spiritual life we see, you know, we see this, that um, there are different personalities in the spiritual life. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I, I wonder if you have observed this in your own kind of experience in life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, yeah, a lot of things to say. Um, Father Mike has a video about like having your style, right? Having your style as a, um, as like, yeah, as a, as a Catholic. And um, some things you can afford to be a part of your style, but like praying the rosary is, is a non-negotiable, right? Like mm-hmm. that's, you can't have a style, right? So it's, If somebody comes to me and says, hey, Patrick, like, you know, they're praying an hour every day. And now, granted, I'm not a spiritual director. Praise God. That's that's more your area. Right. Uh, And say, hey, like, I I desire for this to be my style. Okay, we can we can have a conversation. Right, You need Carmelites. You need Franciscans. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesuits. Right. The whole the whole nine. Um, And I I definitely see that, I think, just with my team, Um, you know, with Nicole and Justine and Anne and uh, and Nathan and Austin. Austin has a very kind of a, a quieter disposition but knows the Lord in a, in a very, very intimate way. Um, very, very intimate way. And like, I benefit from that, um, just from his kind of, I don't want to say stoicism, but his resolve and steadiness, right, in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And then we have Anne, who definitely leans more towards right, the kind of the active, right, part of, of discipleship. Now, granted, you can't have one without the other, right? Mm-hmm. If we just love Bible studies and love leading Bible studies, but if we're not praying, <laughs> right, uh, that... That, that, that's not how it works, right? We, we have to pray. So I think if you have the basis, right, if, if we're praying, if we're going to Mass, right, if we're living a sacramental life, I think we can afford to have a style. Um, Ignatian meditation versus Lexio, right? Mm-hmm. Like what, what, is the, what, what, what gifts ha- has the Lord given you? But I think you just have to have that basis of prayer like we talked about. Yeah, I really like that. You know, um, sports, regardless of what sport it is, mm-hmm. um, there are you know, kind of basic abilities and Absolutely. skills, you know, you know, a certain healthiness, you mm-hmm. know, you know, a certain ability to, you know, do whatever. But I think we can identify like what are the, the foundational skills at the heart of every sport? It's the same with the spiritual life, For you sure. know, the sacraments, uh, prayer, mm-hmm. you know, Marian devotion, yes. these kind of things. But then also, and I really love this point is that there are almost like personalities, Yes, you know, that, um, you know, some people are deeper at prayer. Mm-hmm. Some people are, you know, deeper at study, I think, yeah. and knowledge. Some people are, you know, more in action. Uh-huh. Um, and, and there, it's all kind of complimentary. And I think sometimes there's a danger 
that, well, I almost like a spiritual envy yes. that I really wish that I was this person. Mm-hmm. Or another thing and that drives me crazy is people who, who like, they really love a saint. Right. And they basically want to recreate that saint's life mm-hmm. in their own life. For sure. And the idea that each of us is unique and the Lord calls us to be ourself mm-hmm. um, in that. And, and that's how we have relationship with them. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I, I look at, you talk about like the similarities to athletics um, growing up. I know he's a Michigan guy, right? And I'm, I'm a newly, I'm a, I'm a new Buckeye. Okay. But like Tom Brady, right? He's the guy that you emulate when it comes to fundamentals and all those kind of things. But there's only one Tom Brady, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't need to be another Tom Brady. I need to be a Patrick. And I think you can look at a lot of the saints, like St. Saint Francis of Assisi. I, I love the way that he, that he lived his life, but I don't plan on, you know, getting stark naked in front of a bunch of people, right? And, and screaming about, about Jesus, right? There's pieces of, of people's lives, especially saints, that you should take. Um, but there's other things that, yeah, you're just not called to necessarily be great at, and that's okay. Um, and I think it, it all stems, uh, and Austin will love this, he, we talk about RIM, relationship, identity, mission. If you are confident and that, that you are experiencing love you need in your relationship, right, with the Father, which brings you your identity as a son or a daughter, well, then you're free to be who the Lord desires for you to be. As my uh, priest back home would say, go play. Mm-hmm. It don't, don't, you know, this paralysis by analysis. But when you're backwards and you're living, we call it mer, right? Oh, my, my relationship and my identity comes from my work or comes from my active life. It gets, it gets backwards. Mm. And I, I think also connected to this is the need for a team mm-hmm. in the spiritual life. Yes. That, no, you know, no one is an island. Obviously, we know we have we live this life mm-hmm. in union with Christ, you know, mm-hmm. and that, you know, we're not alone. Yep. But but also key to the spiritual life are other people on our team. Absolutely. You know, we need like small group support. Yes. We need confessors. Mm-hmm. We need spiritual directors. Yes. We need friends, you know, good disciples who we can talk to to about the spiritual life yeah it's just like coaches like i can you know get really good right at at playing football right i can throw really really well but there's a ceiling that that i reach unless there's somebody that communicates to me or shows me a better way to do things like i can grow probably i'd say a fair amount right in the spiritual life it was if it was just if it was just me and jesus Mm -hmm. but thankfully there's people within the diocese right within um, my life that are farther along, right, on their, on their journey with the Lord than, than I am. And to take really um, some humility and understand, hey, there might be someone out there that knows more than you, but praise Jesus because you can learn from them. So it's with, a, with you have to admit that you don't have it all together, that you don't know everything. You know, even Bishop, right, doesn't know everything. Now, granted, I think he's doing a wonderful job, right, but there's still, he has a spiritual director, mm-hmm. right, Um and, and I, I just think that there has to be some sort of, yeah, how are we being fed? Um, and how are we putting ourselves in positions to, to find those people that can pour into our life? And, you know, I think on the team, too, um, I would imagine at times you probably had to have a word with your offensive linemen. Absolutely. You know, especially yes. if you needed a little protection for or sure. some more time. Yeah. And sometimes we do have to kind of call out. Absolutely. Um, the people on our team yes. in the spiritual life. No doubt. And I, and I think that, um, but that has to come from a from a position of relationship, right? If I have somebody that speaks into my life that doesn't know me, now, you know, I know today's the feast day of Padre Pio, right? So maybe if it was Padre Pio, we'd take, kind of t- not take that for granted. But if somebody doesn't know you or you don't feel like they, they love you, then you're way obviously less inclined to listen to what they have to mm-hmm. say. Um, but like what we do, right? We, you know, as St. Paul says, right? Not only the gospel, but our very selves is what we're called to share with people. And so we yeah, share our lives with, with these students um, and they share their lives with us. And we put ourselves in a position to where we have the moral authority to speak into their lives um, because they trust us and they know that we love them. Mm. And, and, and I think to reciprocate to it, because it's not just like a correction or, Mm-mm. you know, a truth. Yes. But we also we also need that support, 
you know, in the sense of, well, here's what I'm facing mm-hmm. in life yes. myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like as a priest, I have a group of other priests that I meet with regularly. That's exactly right. Um, that, you know, it, it gives me the, the support, really, that I need mm-hmm. um, to do what I do. Yes. It's the same thing. Like as a, as a team director, right, there are certain things that you encounter that the rest of your team does not. So... I'm in a group with other team directors, right, where we can share these kind of common struggles or questions. And just like you and Father, you know, Father Han, you have that relationship because you have that common experience. So finding other dads, right, other mothers, uh, brothers and sisters that have shared a common experience with you that you can journey with together. Yeah. And it's really, I think, at the the heart, we... um, we don't emphasize it enough, but I do think, especially like with real presence, real future, and mm-hmm. as the diocese really focuses on missionary disciple formation, mm-hmm. it I think this theme is going to just be emphasized again and again, and it's going to be present in all of our parishes and is small groups, absolutely, decide, you know, small group yes. discipleship, yes, that um, coming together a small group, maybe mm-hmm. it's fathers as you say maybe it's yeah. mothers maybe it's you know yeah. lawyers maybe it's you mm-hmm. know it's high school students absolutely um, but coming together and and encouraging each other sharing our ups and our downs mm-hmm. um, engaging in some sort of formation together yes, for sure that um, it, it's how it's it's how the the early church did it mm-hmm. and it's really how we're going to have to do it in this age. Yeah, absolutely. C.S. Lewis talks about, um, you know, outside of the blessed sacrament, right? You know, the holiest thing in the world is, is the person right standing beside you. And I think we have this, um, this kind of idea that we can only learn things from priests and from bishops, which is true, right? We do learn tons of things from them, but do we have the capacity to receive um, from people that know less than us, right? Always, we should always be listening, Um, to somebody that they have the capacity to share something with us that we don't already know. Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. You've been listening to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today has been Patrick Tolles, and until next time, peace and all good.